All right, hey guys, so today I've decided to talk about a really exciting pen. It's a pen that many people consider to be their grail pen, the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Um, before we get started, um, I'll just say I don't have the box on me. I recently traveled to California and I didn't bring that box with me because I didn't want to carry any extra stuff. Um, however, if you own any other types of uh, Visconti pens, you'll know that it's pretty much the same presentation that all of their pens come in. It's the nice leatherette, the brown leatherette with kind of that tan, um, you know, light cream interior um, where the pen sits nicely in the clip. Um, and then they tend to have a little pull-out drawer that uh, basically houses the booklet that contains all of the warranty information and some more information on the company itself. So. Um, with that being said, we'll save a little bit of time on that review uh, because we won't be discussing that box. And so we'll be able to jump right in and talk about that pen. So again, this is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. Uh, the Homo Sapiens comes in three different um, colors uh, and then also two different size. So they've got the maxi size, which is this pen. And then they also have the MIDI size, which is essentially the same pen, but scaled down a little bit more. So um, the MIDI size uh, tends to be, I, I would assume, more comfortable with people who have smaller hands because the maxi size is a whopping, whopping pen. This is a big pen. Essentially, it also not only is it big, but it also weighs in at... 45 grams so if you are using this pen and you don't or if you're looking to get this pen and you don't like big pens big heavy pens and this probably isn't going to be the pen for you at least the maxi size i would look into potentially getting the midi size which i think would probably be a good option um that being said, like we talked about, there are three different color schemes. This is the Visconti Bronze Age, and you can see that it essentially has a bunch of the different bronze fittings, including the clip, the main cap band, the bands here on top, as well as the band here at the bottom. The other ones are the Steel Age and the Dark Ages. And so essentially the Steel Age has uh, steel fittings, that go ahead and take place of these bronze ones here, including the clip. And then the dark ages are all, ha all have that dark coating on them, so it, it tends to be a black on black pen. And then furthermore, the nib on the dark ages is also a black nib. Uh, whereas the nib on the steel age Homo sapiens is a single tone, uh, you know, nib. it's still the same type of palladium nib, However, it has that, that steel slash, you know, silvery color to the nib. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and review this pen, the Bronze Age, and yeah, let's, let's pop into it. So at first glance, you can see, like we said, that this is a big pen. <laughs> it's a relatively nice sized pen. You know, this is capped, so you can see just um, as far as size is concerned. With that cap posted, it's huge. This is a big pen. It's also, like I said, very heavy. And so we'll take a look at some of the, the fixtures. In this case, you see that it has the traditional Visconti arched clip. It's spring-loaded, so it's not gonna fall out of your pocket uh, relatively easy if you do uh, want to trek this with you and keep it in your pocket. So it snaps back really nicely, as you can see. Um, it's a really secure clip. It feels good. It's pretty easy to open. You just grab it by there and it pops open for you. Then we'll take a look at the, the top. Now, in, in this case, a lot of the higher end Visconti pens have the My Pen system, which means that this is actually secured via a magnet. And so this top little decoration here is actually removable and you can replace it with a lot of the other options that Visconti has available. Um, obviously, if you wanna do it yourself, you're gonna need a magnet so that you can take this one off and put the new ones on. They've got a lot of different stones that can go in here. There's some places that have initials as well that you can go ahead and completely customize it with your own initials, which I think is really quite a nice touch. You know, you can really personalize that pen. So 
you know, if you leave it somewhere, boom, your initials are right there. Probably shouldn't leave this pen anywhere because it's quite expensive, but you know, you can really make it yours. Then we also see that the cap has these two uh, bronze bands that are uh, about midway down into the cap. And so then we continue down into the body and we have one more bronze fitting down here at the end. So as far as this pen is concerned, we'll go ahead and open it. This pen has the Visconti power filling system, which is essentially a vacuum fill system. And so what you do in order to fill this, and I'll go ahead and show you guys, is that you unscrew it, and you can see that as you unscrew it, it comes slightly off, and then you go ahead and you open it up like this, and so what you'll do is you'll take your bottle of ink, and I have the Takasumi here with me today. You'll place the pen into the ink, and then you'll completely submerge it, and then you'll push it down, push it down, push it down, and then right at the end, that last click right there, it shoots up and it essentially sucks all of the ink back up into the barrel. So as you can see, and then after that's done, you go ahead and you re-screw that back in to secure it. And then you can go ahead and wipe off the nib. Now, this is a talking point that I want to go ahead and address right now. So you can see that, you know, I've cleaned this pen off uh, around the section. I've cleaned it off so that, you know, it's, it's coming off relatively clean now. So because this is made out of the, the lava material and they call it, I believe, hy hydroscopic or hygroscopic, and that essentially means that it will wick water, um, including moisture off your fingertips, which makes for a nice writing experience. You know, the pen doesn't become very slippery but when we look at this pen right now, you know, it's looking clean. However, I will say that when you ink this, I'm going to go ahead, I t this is a wet Q-tip. Now I can go ahead and actually, you'll see, look at that much actually came off of the section. When you fill this pen, some of that ink will stick to the section itself. Look at that. It looked like it was dry when I was taking it off. It looked like there was nothing else on there. When I was taking it off with just the, the regular toilet paper and I was drying it, but there's actually a significant amount that was really absorbed into the pen. So um, I will say there have been times before I noticed that this happened. So now when I, when I actually fill it, I just give it a nice clean and but there were times where I'd be like where is this ink coming from on my hands and it turns out that you know the pen itself will absorb some of that ink and this is the second q-tip and you can see how much ink is still on there this is a con for me this is something that I don't like about the pen I don't think that basically it should be such a you know hassle uh, to, to simply fill your your fountain pen you know so as you can see, it's still taking some ink off. Now, I will also say that the same holds true, that occasionally when this pen leaks into the cap, it will um, actually send some ink into the inside of the cap. So this is another wet Q-tip, and look at that. Like there's a lot of ink in there. There's a lot of ink in there. And that's something that I don't really like. Now. I don't know if basically um, this occurs to everybody's pen, but it happens to mine. So you really do have to be cautious of that. And I just wanted to let you guys know about that because that's a big con for me. Look at second wet Q-tip, it's still taking ink outside out of the cap. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, dry it just once with one Q-tip so I can continue on the review with you guys. So that being said, um, you know, with that power filler system, there also isn't a window. So you don't know when this is actually empty or not. You kind of just have to, you know, listen to what the pen is telling you. If it starts to run, you'll see that it starts to skip a little bit more and that, you know, that ink isn't flowing as nicely. So now let's talk about the nib. So as you can see, it may be a little hard to see here, but this is actually a dual tone nib. And on the nib, it says Visconti 23 karat palladium, 
or PD 950 Firenze Extra Fine. It's got the nice, uh, and I'll get a close up again in the writing sample, but it's got the nice, uh, you know, kind of decoration that Visconti often adorns its nibs with. Um, and so in this case, it's got some, you know, the second tone is around the edge of the nib as well as in some of the flourishes of the nib itself. So this is, <coughs> excuse me, so this is basically a nib that many people love. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm still not really sold on it myself. I have found that, yes, it's a very wet writer. It's beautiful and, and it lays down a very generous amount of ink. However, what I've also found is that it lays down so much that I've actually had this pen bleed through Rhodia paper, which um, it wasn't the premium line, it was just the normal line of the Rhodia paper, but it would bleed through even that, and I think it's 80 grams, that paper. So that being said, like this, this lays down a lot of ink. It won't bleed through, the premium line but it like I said it does bleed through even high-end papers because it lays down so much ink it uh, also since the the flow is so so great that extra fine nib is really not an extra fine in my opinion and as you guys may know I'm a big fan of really fine lines this has got to be at least a Japanese medium at least so it's a very thick line, and I have a paper here during the writing sample that I'll show you guys so you can really see what I mean, that this lays down a thick line even though it's an extra fine. So if you like really thick lines, this is going to be the pen for you. And this is only an extra fine. So as you can imagine, the higher up you get in the nib size, um, you know, the thicker the line is going to be and the more ink it's going to lay down on your page. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Then you can also see that it's just got this, um, you know, pretty typical Visconti feed in there, which is nice. And then the capping mechanism is also something pretty unique to a lot of the high-end Visconti pens. So essentially, it takes like less than even a quarter of a turn to cap the pen. That's on there. Then you just push down slightly, and then you can take the pen right off. You know, they say that this is in order to keep it accidentally from opening up while it's in your pocket or anything. I don't personally know how that's going to be better than a cap that is screwed on and it takes like five, you know, three to five uh, entire turns in order to get that cap off. But hey, they say it's supposed to help in order to do that. Otherwise, it's pretty easy. Now the cap's off, cap's on, cap's off, cap's on. So you can see that just in normal everyday use, just very little, very little motion can uncap the pen. So does that help? I don't know. It is kind of fun. I will kind of just sit there in class sometimes and cap and uncap and cap and uncap this pen because it has that nice little motion. And if you're a fidgeter, hey, you might really like this pen and this capping mechanism. So that's essentially um, the Visconti Homo sapiens there. Like I said, some of the very the pros of it are that this is a really nice pen. This is it, it does have some nice craftsmanship. This is it posted. It's quite big. This is the maxi size again. This is quite quite big, as you can see. Unposted, I think a lot of people will probably prefer to have it unposted, but I actually post this one. Most of my pens I like to keep posted unless again there's some type of contraindication for that. So unposted, you can see that it essentially does still stick out quite a bit. And then posted, it's huge. It's really huge. But that, like I said before, that counterbalance allows you to get those really high looped letters if you're writing in cursive. And that's something that I really appreciate. And then uh, on the band itself, it just says Homo sapiens. That's it, on the band right in there, Homo sapiens. So. Um, with that being said, um, again, some of the pros that I really like about this pen are that, you know, the nib is very nice. Um, it's a it's a gorgeous looking nib. Um, I, I also really like the style of the body. I like the material that it's made out of. 
and I think that this is really a quite a stunning pen and like I previously stated it's the grail pen for many people. The cons that I don't like about this pen are even though I said I liked the material this pen will absorb ink and you will have to clean this section if you dip the ink in there. Um, you know, otherwise, if you're writing and, you, and your hands get sweaty at all, it, your hands may um, essentially attract some of that ink off of the pen. And again, it will get lodged within the cap itself. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Likewise, I also think that although I said I liked the nib, I may eventually send this nib to a nib meister to have them grind it down to a Japanese fine and potentially adjust the ink flow on it because I don't like it when something bleeds through paper. I don't want to use just one side of the paper. I like using both sides. And, um, and you know, since it does lay down so much ink, it's, it's not really a fine nib at all, even though it's an extra fine nib. Um, when you're using regular paper, if you have that really thick line, then you have to make your, li your lines uh, or your letters a lot bigger so that they look more proportional. And since, you know, I kind of pride myself on penmanship, that's, uh, that's not something that's really able to be accomplished uh, in, you know, standard lined paper. You can't make it bigger. The lines aren't any bigger. So otherwise, um, it is very smooth. It will skip occasionally, but very rarely, very rarely. So with that being said, I'm going to pop in and we'll do a little bit of a writing sample on this pen. And thanks for watching, you guys. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the writing sample. Again, here's the Visconti Homo sapiens in a close-up view. A nice thing about that cap mechanism is that it can actually be done in one, in one hand, with one hand only. Here's a close-up of the nib. Uh, it is a beautiful nib again. It's got that dual tone that may be kind of hard to see in this lighting, but the accents, the, decora the decorative aspects of the nib are in a gold color, whereas the middle are in a silvery color. And this is, again, the 23 karat Palladium Dream Touch nib. I do want you guys to know, we spoke about it in the video, but look along the rim of that section there. You can see some of that ink that has actually been absorbed into the section. That is one thing I don't really like about the pen. And here is uh, the very wet feed right here. You can see it is a very wet nib, and so it is very smooth to write with. That being said, let's give it a write. I don't even think you can hear it scratching at all. You can see how wet that nib is. It's laying down a lot of ink. And it does have a bit of flex to it. Let's take a look. I wouldn't call this a flex nib by any means, but you know, if you do want a little line variation, you will get it. Here's a cross hatch. You can see it's just puddles of ink pouring out of it. And then let's do a dry test. This is instantly. Again, this nib retails for, or this pen retails for around $695 in five seconds. But you can find it at a lot of places for a lot cheaper. So I wouldn't really recommend um, purchasing it full price. It is nice when you buy it from a licensed retailer because you do get that Visconti warranty and so yeah take a look around if this is a pen that you are very interested in. I tend to use this in reverse writing as you can see the line is quite smaller as compared to the one on top it is still very wet though so anyway there is the Visconti Homo Sapiens. It's a very nice nib, although for me, 
I may eventually get it ground once my warranty expires. And there's a close-up view. Like I said, a grail pen for many people. And if you get it, I do think that you will enjoy it. Anyway, thanks for watching, you guys. And uh, I hope you liked the review.